Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I realize it has been some time since I posted a video in this series. I apologize for that, but I do intend to continue it until KSP2 comes out. I've just been somewhat distracted and it is my way of keeping touch with how stock things work. I don't want to be so hopelessly entrenched in realism overhaul that I can't come back to stock things when KSP2 comes out. I need to make sure that I can launch stuff without the fine tuning that is allowed by MechJab or KOS. You know, I have to control it by hand. And also, I want to be able to dock the way stock docking works as opposed to realism overall docking works. And there's all a whole bunch of things like that, like uh, when you time your maneuvers and stuff. So, yeah, I, I do intend to keep it up so that I have all my skills intact, such as they are. Uh, for when KSP2 comes out and uh, I do want to in this series build up the Kerbal system uh, to whatever extent we can using the bases and stations contracts from contract configurator and we'll see what it gives us. Uh, it is a little bit sad that all of the station contracts are basically the same. They have the same requirements, right? Uh, they require four Kerbals, power generator, science lab, cupola and so uh, I'm, I'm not going to belabor it. We're going to launch exactly what we have launched, uh, basically. If it works, uh, I don't see any particular reason to change this in particular. This was the Val station. We're going to launch it to Ike. And, you know, it allows for expansion and everything like that. So since there's no apparent problem with it, I think we'll just go ahead and launch this. We need to launch one to Ike. We need to launch basically the same thing to Paul and uh, also uh, put one in orbit around Joule, though that's fairly low, and also one around Tylo. So there's a lot of stations, and hopefully once we build them, we can get it more interesting contracts like expanding them, or there's this faulty power module on Leif Station, for instance, and so we have to send an engineer for that. So we'll get to do those kinds of missions in the future. But for now, let's just set things up so that we will get all those contracts and be able to do those interesting things. Uh, starting with this Ike station since our Kerbin to Duna window is next. Okay, here we are with the intended Ike station and the VAB is casting a long, long shadow because the sun is behind it. But we will launch now anyway. Throttle up, SAS on, and go. Now, I previously demonstrated the efficacy of the little shelter mice as they wa as they are. Uh, what do we call them? Vector mice? Vector mice, I suppose. So, I'm not going to try and recover one this time. Uh, we'll just assume that that would be possible and I'll waste the money. Uh, I haven't put stage recovery in or anything like that. That would be nice, but it's fine. I doubt stage recovery would take the recovery of those into account anyway. And yeah, one thing that is necessary to make sure I continue to be adapted to is the fact that the rockets are way wobblier in stock than they are in realism overhaul. Something to consider. Alright, and booster set. Okay. Getting mostly flattened out now. So I've been playing the Next Space Rebels and uh, it does give me some ideas when it comes to Kerbal. Uh, not necessarily what you might think of, though the bargain parts idea, uh, of course there was a mod like that. I, I do like the the concept uh, of maybe bringing that into Kerbal, but uh, more importantly, I, I thought about sort of remaking the stock parts in such a way that the nodes will still work, so that you can open the craft files and they'll be fine. But sort of giving them more of a metallic or a, a sort of aesthetic that it shows that they have been cobbled together in, say, a field somewhere. <laughs> something like that, you know, SpaceXing Starship or something like that. I thought about maybe may making parts like that, but it depends on how long we have until KSP2 comes out. Okay, we've got uh, two of these surface mount antennas, we also have uh, the dish in front. I guess we didn't really need the surface mount antenna. I'll ditch the fairing. So yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be uh, parts as grungy as the Next Space Rebels parts, you know, not like that. 
uh, they'll be shaped basically the same, just maybe with extra pipes on the edge, you know, uh, some rivets, that sort of thing. Okay, we will let go of the shuttle mice there, or vector mice, and they would hopefully go back to a safe landing. I should have dumped the oxidizer into them, but oh well. Okay, we're in a safe orbit. Let's try and transfer over to Duna. You're passing by the moon at 360 kilometers there. But okay, as long as we get Duna periapsis, it's fine. But as I fine tune it, are we going to get closer to the moon and crash into it? That is the question. Nope, still 362 kilometers. Okay, so let's just time warp and do this node. Okay, and go. I don't know if we, we will reach before we have to do all the jewel stuff. We've got a lot of jewel stuff to do. Okay, we have completed the burn. The maneuver is wandering off there. Uh, doesn't want to get rid of it though. Okay, there we go. We have a lower moon periapsis than expected, but it's still okay. And it looks like, did we overdo it? I think we overdid it. We need to go retrograde a bit. Unfortunately, I didn't put RCS on this thing. I guess that will be a new module or something for the Kerbals to attach to it. Might as well give them some work. It is safely on its way right now. We need to do a mid-course adjustment with it though. And preferably one that gets us an encounter with Ike, of course. Oh, good. Uh, capturing at low level around Duna seems to... I wanted to save Mars there. Uh, Duna seems to work out. The question is, which way around Ike do we want to go? Uh, but we've got an encounter like that, so that's not too bad. We've got plenty of fuel for this business, since this was originally meant for Val. And, yep, uh, we can get, uh, we don't need anything else around Duna right now, so I'll get rid of that alarm. The jewel window is in 83 days, so we'll just follow this out. But we'll probably have to do the jewel stuff before this arrives. So, this is going to pass by the moon. Okay, bye-bye Kerbin. Moon flyby. Okay, and go. Alright, that should get us something. I don't know if we retained our Ike encounter. Let's see. Uh, well, no, everything is messed up. Hold on. <laughs> okay, we'll do that. It's not that much different. Okay. Alright, so that's 58 days, so that'll be after the Jew window. So we have our correction and our intended plot. Let's go ahead and add that alarm. So, on to all the jewel stuff, which will maybe look the same, but there is the return to Kerbin from flyby of Paul and bring Yellowstones back from Paul. That's a whole other business, isn't it? So we'll be launching some stations over there, but we need to get those Yellowstones. And the, the rover for Tyler will hold off on. But there is that one power module on Leaf Station. I think that will hold off on as well. I think the Yellowstones on Paul are most interesting. So I'll think uh, we'll probably send something for that along with the space stations. So let me work on that. Okay, so I've tried to design a Paul lander as trim as possible. Uh, we just need the Kerbal to get out, grab a rock, and come back. Paul is not that big. The Kerbal should be able to EVA. So I've tried to... I mean, we, we need to come back because we want to satisfy... Well, of course we want to bring the stones back, but uh, we need to return to Kerbin from a flyby of Paul as well. So I decided to just go with the Mark 1 pod on the heat shield and this will be the lander. It'll land on the little dumplings. Uh, we've got a spark engine at the bottom there. And so 
Kept it really simple. That's got 1900 meters per second, which I hope will be enough to land on Paul, take off from it, and then come back home. Mm, I'm not sure though. I think I might be over simplifying this. Maybe I can get another tank in. I'm a little bit worried about that. We should be able to put another tank in without any trouble. Just gonna do it like that. And that'll give us a little bit more room. Uh, as far as thrust weight ratio is concerned, uh, Spark has way more than necessary to land on Paul. So that's not a problem. This staging just all went messed up. Uh, but yeah, I I'm actually feeling a little bit uh, out of sorts about stock right now. As is, in other words, I I seem to not be in practice. <laughs> I, I, I'm worried that this is not good enough for our thing. So we've got a nerve here. And we've got a lot of liquid fuel. That nerve stage, uh, in theory, if it tells me the numbers, uh, actually has more than 4,000 meters per second. We are not We could have used that stage to help us come back if we put a docking port on this, on the lander. Uh, but I decided not to do that. The nerve is configured, the nerve stage is configured as an independent stage that can tug things, just in case we want to do that. So. Uh, other stuff will dock on the docking port. It's got this Commutron 88-88 on one side. It's got the solar panel on the other side. And they almost counterbalance each other. It's like 0.01 tons difference. And we do have a reaction wheel on top. Little mini RCS thrusters just for docking with stuff that needs to tug. It might be better if we had the claw, but the claw doesn't have a top node, so we wouldn't have... We, well, we would be able to figure out a way to put the pod on top, but I decided to skip that. All right, so that's the idea. I'm gonna time warp to the window, and we will see if this is a good idea or if I have made another horrible mistake. So, yep. Okay, we are at the window. I think any old pilot can pick up a stone, hopefully. Hopefully these yellow stones are just the regular old thing that pilots can pick up, so. Uh, we'll have Cauldron do it, since uh, Cauldron is our least experienced pilot. And that, uh, of course, we don't have a separate controller on the pod, so I do want a pilot, so we don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, there is a controller on the nuclear stage, though. Okay, here we go. It's always nice having overwhelming Delta V, and this time I've gone for a trimmer option. Not necessarily the most efficient or anything, but... Throttle up. SAS on, and launch. Well, we're going up. Could be worse. I don't know how much ablator I needed on the Mark 1 pod, and maybe we could have dumped some. I almost certainly overdid the finnage. The swivels aren't going to get us all the way to orbit. The nerve has to do some of that. Ooh, okay, well, hmm. The fins are making me turn faster than I wanted to. Yep, I shouldn't stay this long away from stock, that's for sure. Uh, the swivels did less than I wanted them to do. Okay. I'll wait a little bit. Okay, separation. Ooh, very vigorous. Nuclear engine. Well, this could take a while. Okay, we've ended with a sort of awkward situation where we're still in the atmosphere on one end. Uh, actually, let's see where we need to transfer to Jewel at. It is on our Apoapsis side, so we do not currently need to get into a full orbit. So once we get to Jewel, we'll have 1,115 to work with in order to get to Paul. I don't know if that's enough or not. We're still in the atmosphere here. A novel approach, if you will. Okay, our plot is probably somewhat wrong here, but we'll see. I'm sure Jewel will help out somehow. 
getting ready and go. It would have been nice if I had picked a Kerbal who could hold the maneuver node. That would have been helpful. Well, we are arriving with somewhat less than I wanted. It'll be better if Tylo gets us into orbit, because that's closer to Paul's orbit. Okay, that's complicated, but okay. That's okay. We seem to constantly end up with somewhat of an inclination, but I will go for this for now, and probably it's just a bad point to try and correct that, and maybe when we get into Joule SOI we can correct it. But we have this maneuver. Oh, it's actually overheating. I was wondering about whether I should put a radiator. It looks like the solar panel is overheating, which I was not expecting, or... I don't know what that thermometer is on. Maybe it's a tank. I think it's a tank, but... Uh, yeah, I was wondering whether I should put a radiator on, but I figured we were going further away from the sun, so it wasn't going to be a big deal. All right, so this is on its way. Let's add the maneuver to the alarm clock. Okay, so I wish it automatically said which vessel instead of just saying maneuver, but I could have typed that in. All right, so Cauldron is on his way, and we want to launch some stations. We need three around Jewel. Uh, we need one Paul station, a Jewel station, and a Tylo station. Okay, I've made some minor changes to the launch from the Ike one. I've underfueled this a little bit as far as the oxidizer. Up there we've got an additional reaction wheel, and I've dumped the mop propellant out of the cupola, since we don't need that. Uh, we will see how it works out, and looking I I thought I put oh the calm dish is right on top so okay I think we are all right here and again I'm not adding additional modules to it of course we could make the stations more complicated the reason I'm not doing that is because I'm expecting more contracts from the bases and stations pack so I don't want to jump the gun hopefully they will have me add something to it and in that case I can take advantage of that to add like an ISRU unit or other facilities. So that is the plan, but we'll see whether the station's pack from uh, Contract Configurator will allow us to do that, or whether I'm just going to have to figure something out on my own. But as it is, we will launch this, and I've just called it Jewel Space Station, even though maybe we'll locate it around one of the moons and fulfill one of those instead. We'll see. So off we go. Same little setup with my little vector mice. The vector mice in this case actually uh, saves the trouble of having additional finage as might be necessary for stability. They already have their little wings and also the vectors themselves gimbal a lot. Okay, separation of boosters. And we continue. Okay, I didn't actually mean to bring them to orbit. I accidentally brought them to orbit. Oh, well. Well, we can deorbit them with their own fuel. Okay, vector mice separation time. Okay, deorbit burn. Right. Next. And deorbit. Okay, so those two are going down. They'd normally wait until the opportunity to land at the KSC. We would have to wait for a little bit longer for them to deorbit in order to get to the KSC, but this is for the best. Okay, we are not reading... Well, we have to unlock this fuel. Well, we've got 3,700, it says. I guess this is not the one that I put the fuel drain valve on, huh? Okay, we have a plot for Jewel. We'll get an encounter, but we will need to do a mid-course adjustment, as with the other ones. Okay, quickly go. Will this make us dip into the atmosphere? We'll see. It looks like it might. Okay. Well, this is a nice view at least, as we continue the burn for Jewel. 
Okay, well, let's take a look at what's forming up here. Oh gosh, we are ways... Why? Why did it do that? Oh, I guess it was because we were pointing at the surface. Oh, geez. Did too much. Oh, uh, we had to turn because otherwise we would clip the atmosphere. So having done that, it threw everything off and I've accidentally overburned. Hopefully our remaining fuel will be enough to do what we need to do and get this into the right position. As usual, we will be relying on the kindness of Tylo and Lath in order to help us out there, probably. Okay, and a mid-course adjustment. Well, that's getting into orbit. All right. That looks nicer than the one that we were sending to Paul, anyway. So, we'll take that. And let's add that maneuver alarm. And you know what? I'll launch another one of these. We'll we'll launch three stations in a single episode, and we will look to expand those. Let's t quickly take a look at the contracts to see if we already have contracts that offer money to expand these stations. So those are the ones we already have. Well, the problem is we have so many contracts, eleven, that we're not getting too many new ones. Base population. Well, there's that one to add crew to Daffles Base and send crew. So they'll pay us to send crew to various stations, so that's good. That'll be fun. But we really need more Kerbals. I, I get the feeling that I'm going to be spending a lot of money on Kerbals if the main thing is we're going to be sending crew all over the place. So first we have to evacuate a station, and then we have to return an evacuated crew to the station. So there's all sorts of stuff going on, uh, adding a science lab, but they, maybe they don't have an add ISRU unit thing. So we might want to consider that just on our own, add an ISRU unit to some of the stations and try and get better configured. We've got the Paul ISRU unit, but we don't have a lot of surface drilling ones in the dual system. Okay, uh, I'll call this a uh, Tylo station because we do need one of those. Uh, it could be either Tylo or Paul. Maybe it's better to have a Paul station. But, I uh, no, you know what? Uh, the Tylo station will do like this, and the Paul station will carry something so that it can assist the crewed mission that we sent over there. Uh, maybe some sort of claw tug so that uh, we could help out in case there ends up not being enough fuel. So, yeah, we'll do it that way. So this will be the Tylo station. Well, without further ado, here we go, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Tried and true system. I mean... I feel a little bit guilty about it, but I really... I mean, I have to have a good reason for trying to change it after all. Maybe we could have reduced the amount of oxidizer a little bit more. The fuel drain valve was another thing, but... Uh, it was all marginal stuff. The nice thing about this format is that we have all this capacity for fuel for the station. Whoa. So, I like that. That most of the stuff that we're launching is going to end up in orbit around our target. Of course, we could just have an entire, like, SSTO to wherever and put everything we launch into orbit, but that's not the most efficient thing going forward in that with these nuclear engines that we have, we've got two of the nerves on the station, right? Uh, that allows it to change its location more efficiently. If we SSTO'd it, we'd have heavy engines like the Vectors and a bunch of them that we'd have to lug around and they won't be necessarily the most efficient thing. Whoa, 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 I've gone too far. I've gone too far. Okay, I've accidentally gotten it too high up here. We will get rid of our little mice and see what we can do. Okay, off with the mouse. Off with the mouse. Activate engines. Unlock fuel. 
and go. All right, so those mice will be deorbiting. And let's see if we need to make orbit or whether we can just go straight out. I mean, one way or another, we'll make orbit along the way, but it's probably not the most efficient thing. Okay, well, we already passed the start burn point, so let's hurry up. Oh, shoot. No, 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 no. I had a node. I had a node. No. Okay, just go prograde. Just go prograde. We'll wing it. Okay, not the way we wanted to go, but it is the way we are going. Okay, we may need to make a correction, but we've got the encounter forming up here. Oh, I didn't even notice there was an alarm clock thing right there to add the maneuver as an alarm. Well, see, we learn something new every time. Uh, I was afraid, you know, this this uh, warp to node thing, but no, uh, it looks like that alarm clock adds the alarm for the maneuver. I still wish it would name it the name of the vessel instead of maneuver, but whatever. It looks like Tylo isn't going to help with this one. Okay, that's a nice orbit, but we're crashing into Lathe. There we go. That's safe. All right. So we will have that maneuver. The alarm is already there. We have launched three space stations in one episode to fulfill three different space station contracts. Next time we've got one more to do, but I hope to make it somewhat different so that we can make use of it as part of the Paul mission. Uh, but yeah, I, well, we're going to have to see about expanding these things and what we can do at least since they're modular we can have modular expansions plan everything out in great detail we'll see maybe you guys have some suggestions but yep this will take care of what we are trying to take care of uh, well it says support for kerbals x there though that doesn't seem right why is it why does this say support for Kerbal's X when we have a hitchhiker storage container, mobile processing lab, and the cupola module? That's that's more than four. Hmm. Oh, ah, I don't know why it's disappearing. Okay, so I don't know why it's got that X'd out when this seems like it would support four Kerbal's. That has me worried. Because we've launched the same thing over and over and over again, but I was expecting that it would suffice, of course. Even just the hitchhiker storage container, but we needed the science lab and the cupola, so... I don't know why it has that support four Kerbals X'd out. Does that mean we have to actually send the four Kerbals there? I'm not sure. Yeah... I, yeah, I don't know how to read that. We might have to actually get the Kerbals to these things. Well, that would be good. I mean, why not? But for now, we will have the stations on their way, and we will see what happens with them in the next episode. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.